Good morning, everyone. Um, guys, I'm just going to entitle this Reflections uh, because that's what it is. I was sitting there talking to Chef Coco last night, and some of you may not know, but she's been in a very bad car accident. Um, she's fine. She's fine. She's a little shaken up. Uh, it happened about three weeks ago, uh, but her sous chef was in the, in the car with her, and the gentleman is a little older. He's about 60. And he's gone through a lot of different things. And we were talking and reflecting about God and just all kinds of things. And she says, you know, he's a believer. He believes in God. She said, but because his sister died and the way that she died and the, really the last 20 years of his life, he's seen ups and downs that have been so rough and difficult that it's really hard for him. And I told her, I said, chef, I said, you know, I used to be in a bad situation. I mean, I told her, I said, I had five cars repossessed. She says, no, I don't remember you telling me that. She says, I know you lost a house. I said, Coco, I lost five cars to bank repossession. Let's give that a moment. Because it took me through emotional upheaval. I walked away from three hoopties after I lost the five because the hoopties were just cars that I could pay cash for. And when they would stop on the street, I would just walk away and let the police take it and the city dump it or whatever had to happen. That's how bad it was. That's not how bad it is. That's how bad it was. But in order to get to the good that you see, I had to change me. And that's what I shared with her. I said, you know, the chef is thinking that my dad was a sous chef. That's the preparation chef. And so I said, you know, I mean, I'm the son of a sous chef. I didn't really have much growing up. I was just tired of being tired. And I said, chef, you know, really, God is testing you. He tests us all. We think that it's just woe is me. And I used to think the same thing. And I said, and I told the truth. I said, chef, I used to tell my wife, leave me. It'll be better for you if you do. Maybe this is me. Maybe it's, it's what I'm going through. But it wasn't just what I was going through. It's how I was thinking. My old pastor used to say, get rid of you. You'll be good when you get rid of your stinking thinking. He's right. He's right. I had failed every single time before I succeeded. In my head, I'd already walked out my failure. I might as well have just accepted my award for losing. All I did was flip the script. The good you see in my life, man, is how negative I used to be. Because I decided to go polar opposite of the rhythm of the enemy. The enemy was throwing out there the worst stuff humanly possible. Brian, you're never going to be, you know, and in your family, and you know how it goes, and you know, and you're not the ones that went to jail. You're not one of those, but you know, it really, you just, you know, whether you go to college or not, you're going to have all these college bills, and then it's this, 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 and this, and, and then something said, have you ever thought of what it is to be a millionaire? Forget that. Have you ever thought what it is to be a billionaire? In the middle of all of that negativity inside of my head, something clicked and said, dude, you haven't lived yet. I cannot control what happens on the street. I can pray. I can seek God. But I can't control whether I get robbed or not, right? I can't control... Um, whether I get into a bad car accident or not, right? I can't control uh, what happens with my children, right? I can't control any of this, but I can participate in all of this. And I can work in a way that the enemy doesn't win every single time I go through a struggle. One thing I know about this life is we're going to go through struggles. We, we do a production and our director passes away. And I'll never tell you what happens behind the scenes on that, but it's not good. 
but it doesn't necessarily have to impact the way we think, how we react to it, what we do. I'm gonna be doing a docu-series later. Uh, my wife wants to do it and she wants me to explain to people how I got out of crisis because it's real. It's very, very, very real. And I was in a very, very, very bad place. And at times I'd get depressed, man, because I was just wearing my brain out with the negativity. It wasn't some doctor I went to. It wasn't some therapist I went to that woke me up. It was God above. And when I tell you to stare in the mirror, I'm really saying take inventory of yourself. You have to take inventory of yourself. Why does the man that continues to rob people continue to rob people? Why does he think that's his only option? Why do people commit suicide? Greater than the things that we think we know about it, what's going on internally? What's going on inside their head? What makes that tick? What makes you tick? Do you even know what makes you tick? Are you even concerned about what makes you tick? Or are you so busy going through the motions with your technology and your, your new cell phone and, and your kids' situation or whatever they're doing, you know, the modeling, the acting, the, the kids that go to school and play football and maybe you got to go to the track game, and maybe whatever, you know, and your marriages is in disarray and you haven't faced or dealt with anything because you don't have time. You just don't have time. You're tired, you got into a rhythm. One thing COVID did for all of us is it stopped our rhythms. Because most people don't realize that's all you're on. You're just in a rhythm, you're not even happy. You're just, you're just in a rhythm, you're, <laughs> that's the rhythm. And you're playing out the rhythm and you're finding little pockets of happiness wherever you can, you know, whether it be when you're sitting there and you're eating your wings and you're watching a football game and then you're like, oh, crap, I got to go back to work. Oh, the rhythm. No, break the cycle. Be happy even in the midst of sorrow. Even in the midst of sorrow, find your happiness. So as the chef and I began to talk, she says, yeah, that, that's it. I said, well, what if God is testing him? He's saying it's been 20 something years. I felt the same thing. It used to be like that for me several years, man. It was just consistent. And finally, I said, you know what? I'm going to expire out of this life and never having been happy. Never, never, ever. Is that why I'm here? So I began seeking God more. I didn't just begin praying. I began warfare praying. Warfare praying is completely different. Speaking to the winds and the waves, speaking to depression, telling it where to go. Speaking influential thoughts within my mind, making declarations as to who I was going to become. Who am I going to become? Who am I anyway? Who am I going to be? At the end of this, at the end of this cycle, I may be going through this struggle, but at the end of this cycle, God, I'm going to be greater. I'm going to be stronger. Why? Because you said in your word, and yes, you got to take him at his word. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Let that power free inside of you. Let it free. It's screaming. And I began telling my wife, I said, you know, I realized something about me. And she said, what's that? I said, when I have those feelings right here in between my sternum, I begin to bleed and it's, it's, I can feel it. And she said, what is that? I said, that's my past. That's the stuff I haven't faced. It's like it just opens up and it just, it hurts really, really bad. And I can't function. I can't get the words out. I can't say what I want to say in those moments. So sometimes my emotion strikes up. I get angry. I get frustrated. I get hurt. It doesn't have to be that way. And if you missed anything about me, please don't miss this. 
It does not have to be that way. You do not have to hurt every single night. You don't. You don't have to be in pain. Even if you're in a bad relationship, you do not have to be in pain. Even if it's you creating a worse situation for you, you know what's going to make that person angry. So what? They frustrated you. If you say that one thing, you know that's going to be the thing that's going to trigger the night and you're not going to have any rest whatsoever. You know that's how it's going to work. Start making a change so that you can make a difference. So then the chef said, oh, my God, she says she calls me count, which I think is funny. But she said, oh, my God, count. She goes, Kobe died before the pandemic. I totally forgot. I said, no, no, he didn't die then. It was now look it up. It's January 2020. I said, oh, my God, that's true. And she said, yeah, I know. I said, no, I know. And she goes, why? I said, because I was entertaining my kids. We were down at the Mob Museum here in Las Vegas and we were visiting it because I was showing my kids that we technically moved from Newport, Kentucky area. We were in the Union area, but that was the first Las Vegas. And I said at the same time, my wife was calling me after she got out of the Sundance Film Festival. And she said the bad part was everybody was happy. And then right before she spoke, Kobe died. They found out Kobe died. Still living her dream. Still there, but having to face adversity right before she makes a speech. That's the rhythm of life. And I can't change that for you. Dr. Stan can't change that for you. Raphael can't change that for you. No one can change that for you. Stephen K. Scott can't change that for you. Ronan can't change that for you. It cannot be changed. How we deal with it is the only thing we have left. How you react to the day. Don't curse the day. Bless the day. Ooh, hallelujah. Bless your day. Be happy today. I don't care. The roof can cave in. It all. One thing I learned from losing those five automobiles. One thing I learned from losing my house. It will not kill me. It didn't kill me. And I started thinking in my mind, I said, you know what? My credit's terrible. Might as well think about repairing my credit, right? It's already done. How do I repair it? You know, and what kind of stories I'm going to tell when I get to the other side of this. That's all I started thinking about. That's it. That's all I had left. That's what you have. What you have is what you have. Don't be spoiled. Don't, don't tell God, ooh, I just wish it was like it is for that other person. Make it that way for you, for you. Be happy. If you don't get nothing else out of this, get happiness out of this. Find your happiness. That is important. I know COVID came and wrecked our brains. It took lives. It... It tore us up. It changed everything. It changed how we think. It changed our money. It changed everything. But guess what? You can still be and find happiness. And if you don't have God, you need him. You need a source. You need something bigger than you. So when she said that, she said, she basically was saying, there's a pattern to it. This iconic figure passes away. That's why I made um, reference to my friend, Static. Because we were talking to some folks, and at that time, um, in 2008, the year he passed, we were in discussion with him about possibly doing some music for uh, one of our musicals that we were doing, and we would use his name. And I think the guys that we're working with us now, I put it together, they bailed because now we don't have that notable name working with us. 
See, our name wasn't big enough. And that was the moment I looked at my wife and I said, you know what? Don't be down. Don't be hurt. Don't be sad. Now I had the strength because I worked on it. And I said, let's call this you and I productions, you and I entertainment, because it's just you and I anyway. Who else can we depend on? And that's really the definition of what Diamond VIP is. Diamond VIP is nothing more than a leverage point. It is a point of reference that you can leverage. It's not your miracle. It wasn't meant to be your miracle. It is a support. It's here. It's going nowhere. I'm going nowhere. I think back and I think to God, I'm like, thank God 21 years ago, we jumped. My brain began to click. Thank God I started researching the world's billionaires 21 years ago. Thank God, because I wouldn't be here now. And the only thing I'm here to do is give you a leverage point to help you. This is legacy for my children and my children's children. What's your legacy look like for your children and your children's children? This is your chance for Exodus. Make it count. God bless.